Welcome back to school, KISD elementary students. To get this year started on the right foot, we need to talk about technology and how we can use it safely. First, let's discuss the three rules for accessing the internet. First, ask a trusted adult before surfing the web. Second, only talk to people you know. And third, stick to places just right for you. Wait, do you believe everything you see on the internet? No, it's important not to believe everything you see on the internet, since people can make things up that aren't true. Always think carefully about the things you see online. Hey, have you heard of the new internet traffic lights? No, what's that? Well, it is a way to stay safe online. As you know, a regular traffic light tells people how to go, s slow down, and stop. In the same way, the internet traffic lights tells people who are visiting websites and apps whether or not it's okay to go somewhere. So, what would a green app or site be? A site or app that's just right for you. It would be fun with things for you to do and see. The site or app would have appropriate words, sort of like reading levels. A level four book might not go with the level two reader. Oh, got it, like a hoop or PBS Kids. Those are just right for me. So what would a yellow site or app be? A yellow site or app is one that I'm not quite sure about that's right for me. It might have words that are hard for me to read. Or it might ask information like my full name, address, or phone number. Or it might even ask me to fill out a form. Okay, I see. I always think of yellow on a traffic sign to mean caution or be careful. So I would probably ask a grown-up for permission on one of those sites. So what is a red site or app? A red site has everything a yellow site has. It's clearly not for me. It might be a place that you have gone by accident, or it might have picture words or videos that are for older kids and adults. It could be a place where people chat with people they don't know. I think I came across a red game once. All of a sudden, I had several strangers chatting with me. Fortunately, my mom helped me figure out how to turn the chat off. Speaking of strangers, what are things that are okay to tell them? Yeah, I was filming out a form the other day. You used SongTube and asked me all kinds of questions. I didn't think you were supposed to share your address with strangers. Aren't strangers going to be reading that form? Good point. I haven't thought about that. I wonder what they, they do with all the information. They usually ask for personal private things, like your name, phone number, and address. Warning! Warning! Do not give that information to strangers! But why not? What will they do with it anyway? Isn't it just stored on a computer somewhere? Sometimes companies such as SongTube like to learn more about the people who use their app. Really? Yeah. And they may even want to send messages to people who are signing up to sell them things. Ugh, I don't want all those emails. I guess the best rule of thumb is to get our parents' permission to sign up for apps like SongTube to let them decide whether or not to enter their information. Pop quiz! Speaking of email, why shouldn't you open a message from someone you don't know? It's important not to open messages from people you don't know, since the information may not be appropriate or safe. All this email talk reminds me. I am so glad I remember my email password today. I picked something so hard to remember, I had to tell my parent. Your password is Lucky the Dog. Your password is Lucky the Dog. Hold the phone! You should never share your username or password with... Only one to crack up. Like I was saying, you should never share your username and password with anyone, including a pet parrot. Usernames and passwords are considered private information and something you want to keep safe. Others could log into your account and pretend to be you. You should only share it with trusted adults, like a teacher or parents. You know, Annie, you should rethink using your dog's name as your password. That password just isn't strong enough to keep harmful folks out of your email and other apps. Some helpful tips are start with a memorable phrase. Like, I love strawberries and bananas. Good point. Uh, <clears throat> only your parents should know your password. Never use any private. Yes, identity information in your password, like your birthday, numbers, or address. Create passwords with at least five, no, eight characters. Use letters, numbers, and symbols in your password. Wait, symbols? No, symbols, like these. Okay, that's a lot to remember, but I think I can do it. One, start with a memorable phrase. Two, only your parents know your password. Three, never use any private identity information in your password. Four, 
create passwords with at least eight characters. Five, use, use letters, letters numbers, numbers, and symbols, symbols in your password. Wow, we learned a lot today. Our stuff is gonna be secure and private. We, we love learning with our technology in Keller ISD. We love learning too. But most importantly, we want our students to be safe on devices in Keller ISD.